all, thank you for having me. Uh, thank you to come listen to my talk. Um, I'll be presenting the, uh, the preliminary results of my work, uh, titled The Last Stand of Engrecum, Biogeographic and Evolutionary History of Darwin's Orchids. Muses, sorry. Um, so the orchid family, one of the largest uh, family of flowering plants with an estimated 28,000 to 31,000 species. And within the uh, Orchidaceae, um, the subtribe, the subfamily Epidendroidae is also the most uh, numerous in species with 15,000 species. Some of the names may be familiar to you, such as Cattleya, Oncidium, Dendrobium. And within Epidendroidae, a tribe Vandae um, has two subtribes. We do like our subdivisions in orchids, uh, Eridinae and Angracinae. Uh, these two are sister groups, and together they form the monopodial orchids, and that's orchids that grow from a terminal stem. Uh, in Aeridinae here, the ubiquitous uh, phalaenopsis that's now sold everywhere, and for Angraecinae, Angraecum sesquipedale. You might have heard of Angraecum sesquipedale because in January uh, 1862, James Bateman sent uh, uh, a few flowers of this species to Darwin while he was studying the pollination of orchids. And Darwin looks at these flowers and he sees these impressive spurs that are about 30 centimeters a foot long. And he predicts that in its natural habitat, Madagascar, there must be a moth that has a proboscis long enough to access the um, nectar that's at the bottom of the spur and doing so uh, pollinates uh, this species. Oh, sorry. The, um, the, the um, moth was only found in 1903, and pollination was only observed in 1992. But uh, there are still a lot of uh, questions uh, surrounding Angraecinae and Angraecum, notably the uh, um, center of origin of these orchids. So as you can see, these orchids are distributed uh, in continental Africa, the Western Indian Ocean Islands, Madagascar and the surrounding archipelagos, and the Neotropics, uh, as well as Sri Lanka here. Um, and uh, since we started using molecular data to, uh, uh, to, uh, um, um, to reassess uh, all the, orchid, uh, the orchid family, Angraecum has been found polyphyletic, and some treatments have tried to, uh, to uh, resolve this, uh, but with uh, limited success. So as I was saying, uh, molecular data has been uh, uh, used uh, on uh, Angraecinae and Angraecum since 2006. And immediately, uh, Angraecum, the most, the, the most numerous uh, genus of this uh, subtribe, was found polyphyletic. Uh, in 2013, Slachetko and collaborators uh, tried to, uh, uh, to uh, uh, correct this by taking all the sections within Angraecum and putting them to uh, a generic level. Uh, the problem is that most of these sections are polyphyletic themselves. Uh, and these results uh, have been confirmed uh, all the way to uh, uh, recently. And the addition of, of more markers only uh, gave us uh, a more uh, um, resolution within the subtribe with three main clades. Based on this, uh, I had three main uh, hypotheses uh, for my work. The first one was that the center uh, of origin of Angraecinae is Madagascar. And for this, uh, we would have to first recover phylo phylogenetic relationships in the subtribe, then uh, estimate divergent times, and finally reconstruct uh, ancestral areas. The second uh, hypothesis was that a monophyletic Angraecum genus can be recognized. And finally, because most uh, some of these sections are polyphyletic, I chose one of them, Section Pectinaria, and uh, decided to work on it and because it is not monophyletic. <laughs> 
so let's take let's step uh, let's take sorry a step back. The distribution map of Angraisine and Airidine, so if we take them together, um, shows that this is a pantropical group, uh, mostly from temperate to tropical Asia. Uh, again, uh, the Western Indian Ocean Islands, continental Africa, and the Neotropics. If we look more closely, we can see that Aeridine is mostly confined to uh, uh, Asia, with only two species ha that have made their way uh, in Madagascar and continental Africa, whereas the Angraecinae are them, uh, uh, are they, they are um, uh, located mostly in continental Africa, the Western Indian Ocean Islands, and the Neotropics, with also two species that made their way, that made their way to uh, uh, Sri Lanka. If we look at other groups of pantropical orchids, uh, on the 1,700 uh, genera of orchids, only 17 are pantropical. But still, we were in luck because Polystachia, who is also in the tribe Vendée, is also uh, pantropical, with uh, most of its species in continental Africa, uh, the center of uh, diversity. Um, uh, Madagascar, like Angraecinae, is a center of endemism with 25 species, 20 species in the Neotropic, and only one species that made its way to uh, uh, Asia. The, uh, the studies from Russell and from Abreu and collaborator found, uh, found that uh, the center of origin of Polystachia is continental Africa, and that its distribution could be explained by several uh, distribu uh, long distance, long dispersal uh, events to the Neotropics, and several also to Madagascar and the, uh, the archipelago. If we look at another group, uh, Bulbophyllum, this, this time uh, a large genus of uh, around 2,200 2, species, um, most of its diversity is in tropical Asia. However, uh, Madagascar is also a center of endemi uh, endemism for this uh, group, with 200 species, that's nearly 10% of the genus, uh, 150 uh, species in, uh, uh, in continental Africa, and 100 species in uh, the Neotropics. Gamitian combs in 2019. Uh, reconstructed ancestral areas for uh, Bulbophyllum, and what they found is that a uh, dispersal event from Asia towards Madagascar, then the Malag Malagasy Bulbophyllum uh, diverged, then colonized the islands surrounding Madagascar and uh, tropical Africa, and from tropical Africa, one dispersal event to the Neotropics. This is uh, the uh, scenario I choose as, this, as my scenario of choice for uh, Angraecine, uh, which is a common ancestor with Aeridine in Asia, but an arrival in Madagascar and then spreading like so from uh, Madagascar to continental Africa and then uh, the Neotropics. To do so, we assembled the largest uh, molecular data set to date for Angraecine, with over uh, 900, 950 uh, individuals in 500 species. Um, and we have, uh, for that, we have six loci, one nuclear, and six plastidial. So, as you can see here, um, the, the, the first result we have, so this, this part of the tree is on top of this one, but for simplicity's sake, I've put them next to one another. So what we recovered is one uh, large Afro-neotropical clade here in blue, sister clade to a small uh, uh, clade of mostly Western uh, Indian Ocean Island uh, Angraecine, which, which are called the Vitsi Angraecoid. And finally, both of them are sister clade to the u uh grouping Angraecum here in Sion with Jumelia and Aerantes. One of the, one of the main uh, results is also that Angraecum is indeed uh, polyphyletic. Here you have Angraecum sensu stricto, and here you have a group of species that are uh, uh, not closely related to these ones. Um, another, uh, another result is that, unfortunately, unfortunately, with Sanger sequences, the internal nodes within Angraecum uh, are, are very weak, 
And so it prevents us from doing um, much more evolutionary hypothesis on the group. However, there's still interesting things to say. Um, mainly the inclusion of three small monotypic or uh, small genera within Engrecum. So here, Sobenicofia ambertiana, which is a sister group to Engrecum section Engrecum. And I don't know if you can see it clearly here, but these, uh, low, these uh, labellums are trilobed uh, in both of these uh, uh, species. And also there is a keel here at the entrance of the spur with the green coloration that uh, at least those are characters that make sense to, to, to have them so close to each other in the tree. Two other uh, uh, species are found within uh, Angraicum. This is Lemurorchis madagascariensis, found for the first time, uh, uh, recovered for the first time within Angraicum, and Eoniella polistachis. And those two species are uh, uh, in a group with uh, Angraicum teres and Angraicum dives that have this kind of, uh, of morphology. They're kind of oddballs in, uh, in, in, uh, in Graecum. They're also confined to continental Africa, but uh, the, the node supporting this uh, group is very weak. So again, this is something we need to, uh, uh, to go further with, with more, uh, more data. Um, the well-defined morphologically, uh, uh, the morphologically well-defined sections, such as six, section Perianggraecum and section Arachnangraecum, are retrieved. Uh, however, you can see that section Angraecum, so this is the type section with the, the type species for Angraecum, is uh, polyphyletic, as I, as I said before, a lot of them are. Uh, here, uh, this group has the labellum uh, here pointed in red. Uh, on the uppermost part of the flower, and in this, uh, uh, this group of the section, it's on the uh, lower part. Um, so there is something uh, uh, with, probably with pollination, uh, but these groups are not, not, uh, not, this group is not, this section is not monophyletic, sorry. And we've been looking at Engraecum's flowers since uh, a, few, a few minutes now, um, and uh, we all, uh, we all the, the kind of image we have is those white flowers with long spurs uh, pollinated by moth. But what, what's interesting too is that 32%, nearly a third of the Angraecum species uh, spread out in uh, seven uh, sections. Uh, those sections form a clade, but they're all intertwined with each other. And those flowers are uh, s s very small, uh, greenish to, white to yellowish, and their labellum are in uh, are boat shaped, and so I dubbed them the navicular group for now. I'll find a better name later. Um, but this is very interesting because you can see that between those white, big white showy flowers and this group, there must have been a shift in pollination, and that helped the the, the these plants to then uh, uh, explore a new space in the uh, new ecological space and produce a third of the species of this group. In order to reconstruct ancestral areas, we had to uh, date the tree. So because the um, fossil record in uh, Orchidaceae in general is very sparse, and the, the, the fossil most related to Engraecum is far away in the, uh, in the phylogeny, we pre I preferred to use a second, secondary calibration point uh, recovered from a, a paper from Givnish, uh, and that is the uh, split between Aeridine and uh, Engraecine. And here at uh, 23.4 million years ago, um, interesting result is the uh, here the the um, the crown age of Engraecine is at 21 million years, uh, 12, 21 million years, and that is uh, in line with the uh, results that they found with. Um, uh, Bilbophyllum. So the Bilbophyllum group from Madagascar and uh, uh, Africa have the same crown age. Um, and the major speci speciation rounds for uh, Angraecine is in the late Miocene, Pleistocene, uh, uh, Pliocene, and in the Pleistocene. And this is in line with the, uh, uh, the findings of uh, Couvreur in his paper, uh, um, um, uh, 
looking at the African uh, uh, biodiversity because these speci speciation rounds, especially the one in the last five million years, are, can be correlated with events of aridification and forest expansion uh, in uh, continental Africa. So, a lot to unpack here, uh, I'm gonna help you. Um, so this is the uh, ancestral area uh, reconstruction. The, the tree is enormous, uh, but first result is that here in this node, the uh, center of uh, origin of the Angraissine was recovered as being Madagascar. Then there was one colonization event to uh, um, Africa, a main colonization event to Africa, and from Africa, one colonization event to the Neotropics. From Madagascar, several colonization events in the Mascarines, the Comoros and the Seychelles. Uh, two species uh, made it to Sri Lanka. And also interesting, when, uh, so uh, um, there has been six retro colonization events from continental Africa to Madagascar. And in two of these groups, uh, we can see that when colonizing back Madagascar, these uh, species that in, uh, in continental Africa do not usually have very long spurs, do develop those uh, long spurs associated with uh, large moth uh, pollination. So in Solenologis, one species uh, went, made its way back to Madagascar. This species has a spur that is up to 33 centimeters long. That's the third longest uh, spur in the androsperms. And uh, we are describing this beautiful species right now. In Aerangis, half of the, gene, uh, half of the uh, species that made their way back to Madagascar have spurs that are longer than 10 centimeters but two species have extra long spurs between 27 and uh, 30 centimeter spurs. So there is something uh, of, of these groups coming back to Madagascar and then adopting this uh, long spur uh, uh, pollination uh, uh, syndrome with moth. So now to my second uh, hypothesis. Uh, a monophyletic uh, Angraecum genus can be recognized. So as we've seen before with the Sanger sequences, we were not able to recover uh, um, intersectional relationship within Angraecum and that prevented us from uh, saying more about this genus. So my idea was to use, to use the Angiosperm 353 probe kit to, to compile a next generation sequence data set and with the, with the help of this extra data, uh, help me to propose a natural classification for the genus. Concerning the sampling, uh, it was done in, uh, uh, mostly in the, uh, the Brussels uh, Silicatec collection, but also in Madagascar uh, during field work and visiting the, uh, the Shade House network that the Missouri Botanical and its partners are maintaining in Madagascar and that hosts at least a, a quarter of the species of the island. Um, also to note, I've sampled 14 specimens in Paris from herbarium sheet, sheets to assess uh, if uh, this uh, methodology worked as well on the silica samples as on the uh, uh, conventionally dried herbariums. Um, all 16 uh, sections are represented. Uh, that's uh, more than 100 taxa, and it's around 60% of, of the diversity of the genus. And a second plate is in the work. One plate is already done, and here are some preliminary results. So on top here, you can see the, the heat map of uh, gene recovery. So uh, the, the, the way it works is that more, uh, the more the, uh, the, the point is uh, dark, um, the more uh, the gene was recovered and uh, with a lot of coverage. Um, so as you can see, it worked uh, quite nicely. Uh, he, each uh, line is an individual, each column is a, is a gene. Uh, out of the 96 individuals we sent, 94 were assembled two completely failed, uh, three genes were not recovered. So I don't know 
uh, it's very interesting because these these uh, probe kit are developed to be uh, compatible for the whole angiosperms. So when they choose uh, uh, one of those uh, ultra conserved elements, well, it's 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 understood that will be conserved. But these three three genes were not recovered for a single individual of the whole plate. Uh, we'll have to see if it is the same for the second plate, and if it is. There's maybe something there. Uh, go back to the, what gene it is, what does it code for, and, and et cetera. Um, down, is, down there is the uh, heat map for the paralog genes. So um, uh, for those who don't know, paralog genes are not uh, orthologous. That means that they're not descended from the, the parent to the, to the, to the uh, descendant. But there are uh, duplication events, and then each of their duplicates uh, follows its own uh, uh, its own evolutionary uh, track. They're a big problem when you, of course, try to uh, reassemble phylogenies based on these. Uh, I'm happy to say that there's only a few paralogs. Uh, this result may be uh, uh, congruent with uh, what um, Farmignon uh, 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 found in his um, study of karyotypes in Engracinae, is that the, uh, the EU, EU Engracoids did not have a lot of gene duplication events, and so maybe that could explain the, why there are so few paralogs. Um, this is a very early tree, but I showed it for, uh, for, uh, for the presentation. Uh, in the box here is what is uh, uh, what was what I referred that to Ungracum sensus dicto with the Sanger uh, sequences. Uh, I used the High Piper pipeline, and this is an astral uh, tree. The type species for Angraecum is here, Angraecum ebioneum. Um, so, Angiosperm 353 worked on Angraecine. Uh, however, Angraecum sensu stricto here is still polyphyletic. Uh, Jumelia is here, uh, sister group to uh, this uh, group of Angraecum. And the, me, the mid, uh, the internal support, sorry, is uh, medium to weak to weakly uh, those nodes are uh, medium to weakly supported and that could be uh, explained because for this uh, tree I used only the exonic part of what I recovered with the uh, angiosperm 353 I did not use the introns because introns are horrible to uh, to align uh, and uh, I didn't have time so um, uh, if we dig deeper uh, so here was section pectinaria, uh, pseudo jumelia. It is now, uh, it should be outside of Angraecum if we want to recognize an Angraecum without jumelia. Uh, however, other sections within Angraecum were well recovered section Angraecum, uh, section peria Angraecum, amblotia Angraecum, etc. And this navicular group also uh, uh, well, uh, well supported and found out again in this data set. Finally, uh, Lemurorchis and Eunola are also found in uh, Angraecum as before. Sobenikofia unfortunately didn't work on the first plate. I'll have to put it on the second one. And here is uh, a group of uh, Angraecum that I showed before and this that made Angraecum polyphyletic. Here they are. Uh, we'll call them Vavavaluina for now, and uh, they're still uh, polyphyletic. From uh, sorry, uh, um, not related to Angraecum. So let's dive in. Um, the third uh, hypothesis was Section pectinaria is not monophyletic. Indeed, it's not because most of these species uh, were uh, classified in Section pectinaria. Uh, so for that, we'll have to identify. Uh, Synapomorphies for the clay for this clade and describe it as a new genus. Um, a little bit of history. In 2016, uh, we were uh, given a, a manuscript that was not finished from Bosser, who was the uh, previous uh, um, uh, the, the late expert on angraecoid orchids in the Paris herbarium. And he started the description of these two species, and with the help of the specimens we gathered on top of what he had, we were able to complete this description and publish those two species. And immediately, uh, those species uh, struck us as, as odd, but we you know, uh, still published them under Angraecum. Two years after, when I started using uh, uh, um, 
molecular data set, the molecular data set we had uh, compiled, and with these species, then we saw that they were outside of Engraicum, and so they should be uh, renamed as uh, something else. And finally, in 2019, we were uh, botanizing the uh, Eastern Escarpment Forest in Madagascar, and we uh, found this little uh, species that is, uh, uh, we think, uh, closely related to all this group. So going back to the, you know, molecular data is one thing, but you, going back to the, uh, to the herbariums and to the, to the morphological uh, um, uh, characters, uh, we identified 17 species uh, that could be related to this group. Uh, 16 types were observed uh, uh, in, uh, during my visits in herbariums. They're now on lawn uh, at the New York Botanical Garden. One type, unfortunately, Angraica microcalis, is thought to have been destroyed in Berlin. Uh, it's not a well-known species. I think it was described on the basis of a single specimen. Uh, and it's a description from the 50s, so uh, we'll have to deal with that. Um, also, two uh, new uh, species, the one I showed you before uh, that I want to call punctata because it has punctuated leaves, and one from Réunion. While the synapomorphies are still to be uh, uh, determined, I've, uh, uh, um, I found out that the, the labellum is uh, mostly uh, trilobed. I don't know what happened here, but there should be a, another one, uh, even, even, even if they're not, uh, even if it's obscurely so. There's the presence of hairs at the entrance of the spur for every of the species I've, uh, uh, I've looked at. Um, and then I'll have to look at the, um, the anther cap has, has weird, uh, uh, um, weird things going on. And the uh, rostellum uh, also is uh, very peculiar. So I'll have to, uh, to um, study those in more detail to get a uh, real good synapomorphy for this group. So, to conclude, um, Madagascar is the center of origin of Angraissiné, as we have uh, 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 um, uh, 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 shown. Uh, uh, the exchange between Madagascar and Africa seemed to be mediated by pollinator shifts. Um, for the NGS data, more work is necessary, uh, including those intron sequences within the, the, the alignment and adding a little bit more uh, uh, specimens uh, to get a good resequenscription of Angraicum. And this group uh, that I want to name Vava Valuin uh, was consistently retrieved not only in Sanger, but also with our NGS data. And so uh, now it's uh, really back to the uh, morphological uh, side of the work, so back to the herbarium. Um, in perspective for short term, uh, as I said, uh, finishing working on this uh, NGS uh, extraction and the data set, redefine Engraicum with, uh, uh, with the results we have, uh, and identify those synapomorphies for this new genus, and then revise uh, Engraicum section pectinaria. Uh, in the long term, a lot of work with other uh, remaining Engraicum section, um, this is a work that previously was done by one person uh, somewhere in an herbarium. Now it's not possible because of the, the amount of data and the amount of specimens. So uh, a good idea would be, whoops, to be to assemble a working group uh, on Madagascar's orchid flora and then to go uh, maybe outside of Engraicum and to start uh, publishing all this diversity we found and to revise those groups that have not, some of them not been revised since the, the 50s and the publication de Flore de Mascareigne and uh, uh, Flore de Madagascar and then uh, of course work on Angraicum pollination especially for this navicular group and who knows maybe predict the next uh, pollinator for Angraicum. Um, I'd like to acknowledge Many people, I said we a lot, uh, we, 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 it's not because I'm French, it's uh, because uh, this work wouldn't have not been possible without all these people. Uh, so I really want to acknowledge their input in, uh, in, this, uh, in this work. And uh, yeah, thank you for uh, listening to me. Uh, yeah, and for your questions. <laughs>